Immerse yourself on the shores of Emerson Point Preserve and discover the aquatic friends who call this preserve home. There's lots of different diversity hidden beneath these waves from our finny friends to our beautiful and exciting invertebrates. Lots of life is going on in these shores. Fin friends are vertebrates that are underwater, that breathe water, and use fins to get around. So our finny friends that we're talking about today first is the juvenile grunt. You can tell he's a juvenile because of his horizontal um, stripes that you can see right there. And what's neat about these guys is they're juveniles. And that Emerson Point is so important for our young fisheries. It allows for little fish like grunts and some of these other ones you see as we go along to take care and to get big. They like to hide in the grasses and in the mangroves and so it's a great habitat. Now back to grunts. Grunts have a great name. They are named after the sound they make out of the water so they will all of a sudden make a scared grunt sound when they get pulled to land. That's how they got their original name. And they're schooling fish which means they organize themselves by size and travel together because there is safety in numbers. There's safety and it will protect them from predators like larger fish or shorebirds. Not all fish like to swim in the water column like the schooling grunt does. Instead, the lizard fish, which you see here, is a benthic fish, a species that spends more time sitting on the sandy bottom and just sort of chilling. It's what they do. Ever needed to flounder around? Our flatfish, the southern flounder, is a master of camouflage, blending into the sea floor. You can see with him, he's got that sandy colored top so that he blends into the sea floor, and then the bottom. The bottom is white, so it almost looks like if he was swimming above, it would look like it was light above. So when a, a flounder is born, uh, they look like any other fish with eyes on either side of their head. But as they get older, the eye will slowly migrate to um, one side of the fish. And this gives the flounder a distinct advantage because when they lay on the bottom, they then have the ability to see with both eyes. And then they are able to ambush their prey. So they're camouflaged completely and they can easily strike at their prey. Let me introduce to you our local burrfish. They are ferocious eaters with strong jaws that can crack open barnacles, crabs, and clams. Burrfish are really special because of their stiff spines that are always sticking out of their bodies. Burrfish are related, but not the same as our local pufferfish. In fact, you can spot the puffers floating at the bottom and the burrfish is swimming up and down in the column right there. And when these fish feel threatened, they inflate their bodies using water. So both the burrfish and the puffer do this. Um, this makes it harder for predators to swallow the fish. Another pair of similar fish are the seahorses and the pipefish. Um, so both have that similar horse-like head, um, but the pipefish are long and skinny, and the seahorses, they sit vertically in the water column. And actually, you can see we have one seahorse that's swimming around, and then we've got four pipefish at the bottom here. These charming, charismatic fish are really special. Really special dads. See, the dads take on the eggs. In, the, in a brood pouch from the female. And after 45 days, they hatch the eggs and set them free into the wild to survive on their own. Both are masters of camouflage, kind of like the flounder we were talking about earlier, except they're found in a different habitat. Um, 
So they're found in seagrasses. They love their seagrasses, and it helps them camouflage because they look just like the seagrass. We've had a peek into the fish. Um, now take a moment to admire our invertebrates, or animals without a backbone, starting with the shrimp. Glass or grass shrimp are almost transparent. You can see them in the bottom corner to the right. And typically, you can't spot them out in the wild. The only way you can see them is with a net, and it's when they do their quick darting movements. The one we have um, today has dark black balls in the abdomen, and that is a female carrying an egg. They're at the very bottom. You can see her carrying a whole brood of eggs, which is really exciting. Um, there are two other types, there's one other type of shrimp that's in there. So we have the glass shrimp, and now our other one is the arrow shrimp. And the arrows are actually two different types of arrows in there, two different colored um, arrow shrimps. One is green, one is brown, and it is believed their name comes from the shape of their body because they're arrow shaped, and they cut through the water really fast. And... and so they got their name. Both of these guys feed off plankton and a lot of other... Um, both the arrow and the glass or grass shrimp can be found in the seagrass beds all around Emerson Point. Another invertebrate is the crown conch, named for the sharp crown-like points on the shell, and actually there are two here. One, the little guy is sitting on top of the big one. And these guys are gastropods. And gastropod just means that it has a hard outside and one shell and a soft inside body, all right? And this one, being that it is a sea snail, right? It, it has this soft inside that is called the foot. And that foot is what helps them walk around. And as you see it's lifted up, you'll also notice that attached to that foot is what is called the operculum. And the operculum is just a hard, almost nail, it's almost the consistency of your fingernail, covering that acts as a back door. So if a predator were to attack or harm it, um, he can close himself on in there and hide. It's a great form of protection. And so, so you'll see them out like this, but when they get nervous, they hide within. Now the crown conch is not the only one who uses the crown conch shell. In fact, um, when a crown conch is done with it, or no longer alive, a hermit crab will move right in. And you can actually see we have two different hermit crabs right here using two different homes. So we've got the crown conch, which you can see him raising up right now, coming up, always oh, peeking his head out. All right, you can see him coming out. You've also noticed that there's a different snail. It's a moon snail shell, and that's what the other hermit crab is in. And hermit crabs choose their shells based on a couple of factors. One is what's available. So shells might not be the only thing available. I've seen hermit crabs use coconuts. I've seen hermit crabs use trash. It's so not always a pretty sight, but I've heard, seen them use it because the back side of their body is really, really vulnerable. And if it is exposed, it can be captured. They can be captured and they can be eaten. But like that crown conch, they can tuck inside of these shells and hide away if a predator does come and are able to protect themselves. Again, different size shells determine, are determined basically on where they live. Like, depending on how big they are depends on how big the shell has to be. And they, lots of times, hermit crabs want um, one big enough that they can grow into, but not so big that it would be hard and way too heavy for them to carry around. From the leaving the cute little small hermit crab, we're now moving on to the larger blue crabs. And so we're having a crabby moment. I love crabs, they're so cute and funny. So blue crabs are scavengers. These guys are 
the ones that are eating the dying, the decaying, the broken down bits of food that are floating in the water column. They are the garbage men of the world's oceans. You'll actually watch him. He's moving his claw to and from his mouth. That's him getting food. And so they're little bits. And so he doesn't have to do a heavy hunting. He's not a heavy hunter. What he is is those... He's kind of like the vulture of the sea. He goes and smells out all the dirtiest things and is able to eat them up and clean it up. So we got to really give him props for that. So food crabs are also... They breathe oxygen, right? Like you, like me, except we breathe it from the air. Blue crabs breathe it like a fish with gills under the water. And why this is so important is unlike, unlike us, he can actually come out of the water for a while. We can go and dive down for a few minutes, but blue crabs, scientists have studied them and they've found that blue crabs can occasionally be lifted out of the water for 24 hours straight and not have problems. Now the pro they have to keep their gills moist. They have to keep that wet. If they keep the gills wet, they're still fine and they can they can handle it. But if they're but so picking them up and looking at them for a few minutes does not normally stress them out. It's why they're kind of hardy souls. So as you can see right now, <laughs> blue crabs are swimmers. And the family that they're in is called Portoneda, which means beautiful swimmers. And so you can see on the back of that crab is their swimmerettes. So their back legs were transformed. Now over time, they flattened out and became like a paddle, like a canoe paddle, so that they can just paddle through the water. It allows for them to quickly go up and down in the water home. They can go large distances and it allows them to have a little bit of an easier time of getting away from pre from be predators right and it allows them also to um to get to a good spot if they all of a sudden are able to sense that there is an area that's got a broken down say whale right carcass or something in the water they can get to it really quick and so then you'll have it You'll have crabs come from all over by swimming to that point. That's why you'll find him um, it, under the water. They like to be at least like a foot down so they can swim fast and get out of the way. Sometimes we're lucky enough to find invertebrate eggs, like the banded tulip snail sitting on the exoskeleton of the horseshoe crab here. See, it's that ruffly bit at the very edge of the horseshoe crab and they choose the horseshoe crab because it's an exoskeleton it is the the dead carcass basically of the horseshoe crab but it's a hard surface and hard surfaces are really easy to attach to and gives their uh, eggs a chance at growing another thing that you'll see them attached to are the turtle grass the egg casings on the seagrass are queen conch like the shell we saw earlier. There is always more to discover beneath the water's waves, so go out and explore all that Emerson Point has to offer.